The Gospel of John, 19th chapter, starting with verse 17. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill the what the scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and for, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus, were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. May your spirit be with us as we listen to your word. May it work in us to guide us and direct us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus said, It is finished. As he hung on the cross, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. According to the world, this may look like a failure, saying it is finished, and giving up his life, giving up his spirit. We may, from the world perspective, say Jesus gave up. Jesus quit trying. But not from his perspective. Jesus was offering a victory. He was completing the work that his father had set in front of him to finish the work, to do what he was sent to do, to complete the task, to, to finish out the mission. As Jesus says in another part of the Gospel of John, I did this to complete the work, to complete the joy, to complete what my father sent me to do. By those words, it is finished, Jesus finished the work of our salvation. On this Good Friday, on this dark day, we may feel that the world is at a loss. We may hear this scripture of how Jesus was crucified. We hear this, we hear this word about a painful death on the cross. It's not a word that we want to hear. It's not a word that we are accustomed to hearing. But it's a word that we need to hear. A word that, that cuts us at our heart. And why does it cut us at our heart? Because we realize what Jesus did for us. John 3.16 says that, that the Father, our Heavenly Father, sent His only Son to this earth. To die for our sake. And he did so not to judge us, but to, but to love us, giving us hope, giving us life, giving us what we had always been looking for. So as we hear those words that Jesus was crucified, how he gave up his life, gave up his spirit for us, we need to be aware of how that affects us in our heart. We need to meditate. We need to think about in our heart of hearts how much Jesus loved us, that he gave up his life, he gave up his spirit, so that we might have life and have it abundantly. The next phase of the story won't happen until Sunday morning, but for today, let it sit with you that Jesus was crucified for you and for me, for our world. A world that is filled with brokenness, a world that is filled with despair, a, wor a world that is filled with greed, a world that is filled with, uh, with jealousy and, and anger and frustration, a world that is filled with sin, a world that is filled with sin that we cannot get ourselves out of. There's those sins that we are a part of without our own, uh, without a way out, without our own choice. But there's also sins that we commit, that we choose to commit. Those sins cling so closely to us. We say, Lord, how do I get out of this? How do I make my way? How do I how do I take a step forward when all the world seems to be trapping me? But then we hear those words from Jesus on the cross saying, It is finished. He bowed his head and he gave up his life. He completed the work for us to get out of that sin, to get out of that trap that clings so closely that we that we just don't know what to do with. And Jesus said, I love you. I love you. You are my beloved. I gave up my life for you. Jesus didn't actually say that, but he did it with his actions. 
He did it by hanging on the cross, asking for that last bit because he was thirsty. And as they gave him that drink, he completed that work, saying, It is finished. It's a powerful scene where Jesus is on the cross and his, and his, uh, and his mother and Mary Magdalene and the beloved disciple are at the foot of the cross. And Jesus says, Behold, this is the one I need you to take care of. And they, they became a special, there became a special relationship right then and there as Jesus offered his mother to be taken care of, seeking her help as she stood there watching helplessly as her own son gave up his own life. She couldn't do anything about it. I remember the time several years ago when, when my wife and I uh, faced the challenge of our own daughter having to go through surgery. She was three months old. And as we went to the hospital, we, we were there for the pre-op. And I remember that moment of handing our little baby girl to the nurse. We were helpless. We couldn't do anything to, uh, we couldn't do anything in that moment, but hope and trust and give it into the hand, give her into the hands of the nurse to go on to be, uh, to, to go on to be part of a surgery that would help her and save her life. It was one of those moments when we couldn't do anything but, but hope and trust. But it was also gut-wrenching and, and painful for us to, to go through that in the next 10 days of being in the hospital with her. We have those agonizing moments as, as parents when we, when we uh, don't know what we should do for our children. Mary Magdalene, Mary, stood there watching Jesus. We can't imagine the anguish and the pain that they were experiencing, the grief that they were, were going through to watch their beloved die on the cross. But Jesus loved them. Jesus loved us so much that he gave up his life right then and there, saying, it is finished. It was a cry of victory, a cry of love, as he bled those tears of, of love for us. That was where our hope came. That was where our salvation came, only to be complete on the third day, and we wait for that news to happen. During World War II, a submarine took on an attack that sank it nearly to the bottom of, of the ocean. They were stuck halfway down and as they, as they were gasping for help and as they were gasping for hope, a rescue team came to the submarine's aid. The divers went down and they began to tap on the hull. There was a young sailor who was one of the survivors of the attack. And he tapped back through Morris Code to those divers. And they, they went to begin to talk to him with Morris Code. And as the young soldier was tapping back through the, through the, through the steel, he tapped out in Morris Code, Is there hope? Is there hope? They were desperate for hope. They were desperate for help. They were desperate for a way out. That's what we face on a daily basis. That's what Jesus offers for us, is a way, an answer to our questions of, is there hope? And Jesus said, it is finished. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for providing the sacrifice for us, saying those words to us, those words of hope, those words of help, those words of victory, it is finished. May that sink into our hearts, how much you love us this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter's sleeping. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sunday's a coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scarlet. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirits burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nail my Savior's hands to the cross. They nail my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raise him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. The Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross. Feeling forsaken by his father. Left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The earth trembles. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It's only Friday. Sunday is a coming.